and welcome to the final video of differentiation where we look at graphs of derivatives. So, um, in this section what we're going to look at is how do we draw a graph of dy dx. Okay, so as we know, dy dx is called the first derivative and d squared y of dx squared is called the second derivative. Another way of looking at differentiation is the rate of change of y, how quickly the y value is changing with regards to the x values. D squared, over d squared y of dx squared is the rate of change of this gradient, which we already discovered in the previous video. So graphs of dy dx, or these derivatives, can be drawn by looking at the gradients of the original graphs. Okay, so we have to look at the gradients and understand um, how we can draw a graph of a derivative. So let's look at this table here. Okay, so if we have a maximum minimum, then that would suggest that the gradient is equal to zero at those points. Okay, so what we're going to have is this is a graph of um, x against f of x. Okay, and what we've got a situation here is x against f dash of x, the derivative. Okay, and what we're trying to imagine is okay, if we've got a maximum minimum, then the gradient is equal to zero for that x value. So how does that how does that sort of reconcile itself in terms of a derivative graph? Well, for a particular x value, against gradient, there is no value gradient, so it will just cut the x axis at that point. Okay, so at a maximum minimum point, the x value which gives a maximum minimum here, that same x value will give a gradient value of zero, which we plot like that. If we have a point of inflection, then that would be then that would um, be represented as touching the x-axis. Okay, it won't cut the x-axis; it will just touch it. So, imagine we had um, a um, cubic. So if you have a point of inflection, it will just touch the x-axis at that point. We'll see an example of this. If we have a positive gradient, then on a graph of x against dy dx. If you have a positive gradient for certain x values, you're going to see um, an increasing line or curve. Similarly, if you have a negative gradient on this original graph, then for the derivative graph, you're going to have um, a line going down or curve going down below the x-axis because the gradient will be negative. And if you've got vertical asymptotes, then those will um, reflect themselves in this situation. So if you've got vertical asymptote, in the original graph, then that will remain the same in the um, derivative graph because vertically there's no ch there's no gradient at all to think about, so there's no real change there. If you've got a horizontal asymptote, then that will be represented at the x-axis in the derivative graph. Okay. So let's have a look at this situation here. We've got the graph which is here. And what we have to do is sketch below it the graph of its derivative. So we use the sort of hints given to us. Okay, I'm going to just make a line here. So this is one. I want everything to match up. Two. Minus one. Minus two. Minus three minus four okay so i've just drawn a, um, a few x values this is x against f dash x and now i'm going to draw my derivative graph so first things first what i'm going to try and analyze is is there any maximum maximums or minimums well there's one maximum here at minus two and there's one minimum here at, my, at one so what I can immediately do is I know the value of the gradient at those points is equal to zero. So what I could do is just have those x-intercepts. So minus two, I've got an x-intercept there, and one, I've got an x-intercept here. Okay. So I'm literally matching it up. Now, what else do I? What else can I see here? In this graph, I've clearly got an increasing gradient. Okay. So I've clearly got a positive gradient. Okay. 
and when I've got a positive gradient that means I'm going to have on my um, derivative graph I'm going to have a curve which re is represented above the x-axis it's going to be positive on my derivative graph so from here from roughly minus 4 all the way to minus 2 I'm going to have a positive curve Like now what's happening after minus 2? After minus 2 on the original graph, the gradient's becoming negative. And as it's becoming negative, I look at my notes and I think, okay, a negative gradient, that means I'm going to have a curve that goes below the x-axis. Okay, it's going below the x-axis. And what happens is when it gets to minus 1, that gradient slowly turns from negative to zero. So what I'd like to see in my derivative graph is a situation where negative values of the gradient will come up to zero here. Okay? And after my at one after this x value of one the gradient becomes positive again. So it's gonna go up like that. And as we clearly see the derivative graph is a quadratic Okay, and that makes sense because this is a cubic. Okay, so as we said before, this would differentiate to a quadratic, so that will give me an idea as to what the derivative graph will be. Okay, so this is not an easy skill set to learn how to draw a graph of derivative. The main things that you should look at are the maximums or minimums, because you can just write those, just plot those as x-intercepts, and then just following the gradient, the nature of the gradient around these maximums or minimums. Okay, okay. If it's got, if it's increasing, then you should have a section above the x-axis. If it's decreasing, you should have a section below the x-axis, etc., etc. Okay. So in terms of practice, um, the, the printing isn't that great on this page. Page 278. Okay. There's some uh, questions there. Exercise 12L. Well worth having a go. And that's the end of differentiation in terms of pure one.